So let's take a look at basic defensive positioning. Firstly, I've got a group of units here. I've got recon, I've got anti-air, I've got tanks, I've got infantry. What's wrong with the positioning here? Ask yourself. The answer is, if I get artillery or if I get some bombers coming in, they're going to kill a lot of my units very quickly. So yes, I've got a fantastic composition of units, but they're not going to do jack shit because they're all going to be dead. So let's have a look at exactly the same group of units, but positioned properly. Now, do you see what's different here? Things are spread out more. They're in a better position. The scout units, the recon units, the Bradley and the Rangers are out at the front so they can see the enemy coming towards you. My tanks are spread out. They're not all clumped together. If you attempt to artillery these tanks, you're going to get maybe two of them if you're lucky. But you're certainly not going to be able to hit all of them. Whereas if they're all clumped together, like over here at this side of the map, you're going to kill them and the infantry in one barrage. The infantry, the riflemen, are stood further back. They're not at the front line. They don't need to be. You can move them into position as and when the enemy moves on you. The anti-air are further back. They're away from the other units to discourage A, them getting hit by artillery that are hitting the other units, and B, to discourage the other units getting hit by artillery that are aimed at them, because anti-air is often targeted by artillery units. Then in the town here, we've got our units spread out slightly. So again, if an artillery unit hits the town, it's more likely to be aiming somewhere in the middle and not hitting all of our troops at once. The rangers are out front, then we've just got some normal infantry, marines and riflemen in positions that if vehicles do get close enough, they can take them out. The lad stingers are sat right at the back so that they can take out aircraft without having to fear other troops getting to them first. Also, the way that these are set up, you have a clear route to get reinforcements in if you are pincered from either side. You can still pull them round the back here. Whereas these guys, there's no obvious defensive position other than right here. So if they pince around you, you're stuck. You don't have a wide enough area to bring in reinforcements easily. You've always got to think about your flanks, not just what's right ahead of you. So the concern here would be around this side. So the next thing I'd be thinking about doing is putting some troops here or over here to help defend what's going on at this front line. The other thing that's handy to have are mortars. They're not just for attacking the enemy, they can also be used defensively. So having them here can help protect your troops with smoke and you can also fire on the enemy. For example, if enemy infantry took over this town here or enemy units were in these trees. Hopefully that's helpful in some way. Let's think about attacking next. So now let's have a look at attacking. The difference is here that you want to be able to attack the enemy without their defensive line wiping you out before you get there. So there's two things to think about. This is an artificial setup, there's no enemy in the game, but let's assume that they hold Chariton and they hold this town here. And we need to go through this town to kill their command vehicle, which is back here in this town. Okay. The first thing to say is, if you can get around their defensive line, which is in this town, do it. Go around. Find a way to get behind the enemy, if you can. If you don't have to hit that defensive wall, don't do it because it's a waste of resources. Now, I want to quickly mention this isn't a defensive line. This is a buildup of troops ready to attack. They're quite close together, so they're at risk of being artilleried or bombed to death. So when you do this, you need to act fairly quickly if they know what you're planning. So the first thing to say is, here's our mortars. We're going to smoke. 
Let's say we're going to attack them and there's no other way around. So, let's smoke. Oh, these are a very handy little unit, the Vasilisk, that the Russians have. They're rapid-fire mortars. Okay, so we've smoked. Great. Now we can attack and throw all of our units into this town, yeah? Well, we can certainly get there, but all their infantry is still there, and all their infantry is still intact. So, attacking them is still going to lead to us hitting a wall of well-defended infantry in buildings. So, that's not great either, and we certainly can't send vehicles up there. What we need to do, as I've mentioned in some of my other videos, is cause the enemy to panic, to frighten their troops, so that they're weak and stunned and we can push through. Instead of just attacking, we need to either drop artillery on here, or bomb it, or my personal favourite, napalm it. Because napalm's great, and the Buratino is a fantastic unit to use against infantry, and frankly, it's good against vehicles too. So, while that gets ready to fire, let's lay down some more smoke, because we don't want that smoke to run out. And don't forget, after your Buratino's fired, move it, because they're going to artillery it. And if you've got another unit next to it, like I do there, move that as well, because if they artillery it, they'll kill whatever was around it. So there we go, the enemy are now in a very bad position. The buildings are burning, their troops are in there, they're dying, they're panicked, they're frightened. Now is the time for us to move up with the cover of all that smoke. Now bear in mind that that fire is still going on. But we can start moving up all of our troops. You could even put down more smoke than this, get it all around. Split your mortars up and fire different barrages at different places, just to provide you that extra cover. And have some units ready to take that town and defend it. So I've got some conkers here for long range defense. Now we can safely assume that their units are still pretty panicked. They're still burning, probably. And our units are now in the town. And we're fighting, we've engaged them. But we're also in the buildings, so we have that extra defence. You could probably be a little bit faster than I was there, to be honest. Trying to explain what I'm doing while doing it isn't always the best idea. But you can hear that alarm there, that's because my troops got damaged by the fire. Because it's still on fire. That's how you take a position. The same would apply if you were going into this forest here, or this forest here. You want to do something to stop their troops, or their defensive line, wiping out your assault. Now equally, if they know you're about to attack, they may well do the same to you. If they've seen you build up forces, if they've seen you start to drop smoke shells, then they may well attack that line where they think your troops are. So your attack could be foiled before it's even started. So if you can, hold things back a little bit. It does help. That's a very basic intro to attacking. And it's not always going to work. There are many variables. But the guiding rules are, if you can go around the defensive line, go around it. Don't engage it. And if you have to engage it, make sure you've done as much damage in terms of causing them to panic as you can before you hit that front line. And make sure you've given your troops cover with smoke. It's so underused and so underestimated. But if they can't see you coming and can't target you, you're already on top of them. So that is a very basic overview to defense and offense. There's a lot more nuance and strategy involved in this. And I certainly can't cover it in a nine minute video. So I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully that's giving you a starting point. Please let me know down in the comments if you found that helpful or if you would like to know more detail about a specific part of that. And I can have a think about how I would do that as a video. 
Thanks again for watching. Please like, share and subscribe and have a fantastic weekend.